Uh, welcome to everyone that's joining. Uh, this will serve as an introduction to FSA loans tonight. And my name is Lisa Mish, and I'm the Director of Farmer Outreach and Technical Assistance at Graphy. Yeah. So before we get started, I want to go over a few Zoom housekeeping points. Um, first, if everyone could please stay on mute uh, during the presentation, we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. So if you have a question at that point, uh, feel free to come off mute. Um, and I might just mute people as we go along just to make sure the audio is clear. Because uh, we are recording uh, the webinar this evening and we'll share out a link to everyone that's here afterwards. Uh, and it'll also be posted on Rafi's website in the next week or so. Uh, we don't have enough time this evening for everyone to introduce themselves. So please go ahead and put your name into the chat box, uh, maybe where you're calling in from and what you grow or produce, just so we can get a sense of who's in the room. Um, and then if you think of any questions as we go through the webinar this evening, please also go ahead and add them to the chat and we will keep a running log and save them for the Q&A at the end. So if we have anyone joining this evening that hasn't had much interaction with Rafi before and wanted to say a welcome and give a brief um, intro to Rafi's an organization. So Rafi USA stands for Rural Advancement Foundation International USA. We're a 30-year-old organization based in North Carolina uh, with a mission of challenging the root causes of unjust food systems. And we do that work primarily within the Southeast part of the United States. And we advocate for sustainable, equitable, just food systems through a variety of different programs. Um, some that I've highlighted here are of our Farmers of Color Network, um, our Farmer Crisis Hotline, and our Resources Resilient Farms Project. Um, if you're a farmer of color on the call and you're not part of the network, I encourage you taking a look at our website uh, for more information about um, membership. Uh, and then I also wanted to do a specific plug for the Resources for Resilient Farms project because that is the project sponsoring this uh, webinar this evening. So this project provides plain language information, farmer trainings, one-on-one -on -one assistance for USDA programs that would support greater farm resilience. Um, and especially we work with the Farmers of Color Network within that um, mission. So right now we, we focus on farm service agency and natural resources conservation service programs and helping to increase the access and usage of those programs. So that includes FSA loans as, as well as other disaster relief programs or NRCS programs like EQIP. Um, so again, I encourage you to take a look at our website, which um, Carolina put into the chat just uh, before. Um, and that will give you more information on our one-on-one -on -one support, um, links to past webinars, as well as uh, blogs and resources. But for tonight, uh, we are talking about FSA loans and we only have one hour. So this really does serve as an introduction to FSA loans as the title suggests. Um, so this is not as much of a deep dive into any particular loan topic. So it's not our, our goal for you to walk out of here as an FSA loan expert, um, mm -hmm. more so to kind of give you a better orientation um, on the FSA lending process and demystify how you might kind of proceed if you're thinking about, um, you know, looking at FSA lending. Uh, so we hope to give you a better roadmap on that. I will say that we hope to host more webinars um, in the following year that will take kind of a deeper dive on some of those FSA topics. So um, please let us know in the chat or the follow-up evaluation if there are any lending topics that you would especially like kind of a deeper look um, for future webinars. Um, so we will talk a bit about FSA, what it is, guaranteed versus direct loans, type of loans, um, eligibility, We'll look at the new loan assistance tool that FSA has um, created um, and talk about kind of the process of applying for a loan. And the last thing that I'll mention about the agenda is that because um, we only have an hour, we want to focus on the loans, but I also want to make you aware of another webinar that we hosted earlier this year that was um, how to work with FSA, um, which I encourage you to go back and watch. And that was really more of a um, look at how does FSA as, a, as an agency operate? Um, how do you make contact and build a relationship with your local office? And what are your rights as a farmers in terms of appeal or receipt of service? Um, and that webinar included two guest presenters that talked about their perspective on challenges and best practices for building relationships with their local office. So it was a great webinar and I encourage you to take a look. All right, and then finally, who's on the call this evening from Rafi? I introduced myself already. 
Um, and then we also have Otis, who is our farmer resources coordinator. Um, he'll be the one presenting the, the bulk of the presentation tonight, and he's your contact for any additional um, FSA loan <coughs> afterwards. And then we also have Carolina, who is our farmer outreach coordinator, um, and she'll be moderating the chat and is your contact if there's any tech issues. Um, and she also works a lot with our NRCS um, outreach. So if you have any questions about NRCS, you could um, get in touch with her as well. Okay, that's it from me. I will pass it over to Otis now. Good evening, everybody. Um, let me just say that I definitely appreciate everybody taking time to come and join us. And I hope you get a lot out of this quick FSA presentation. I am your former resource coordinator. So if anybody, uh, if you have any questions or concerns after this presentation, um, my contact information is there. So you will be able to contact me and I'm always ready to help. So once again, thank you guys. So let's get started today. What and who is FSA? FSA is the acronym for Farm Service Agency, right? Of course, we know Farm Service Agency is a part of USDA. Uh, the Farm Service, Service Agency traces its, um, its start back to 1933 during the uh, depths of the uh, Great Depression. Um, it, was a, it was a wave of discontent caused by progressive unemployment and farm, and farm failures. And um, FSA was once called the Farm Security Administration. And today, FSA responsibilities are organized into five areas. There's farm programs, farm loans, co commodity operations, management, and state operations. <clears throat> and excuse my voice, guys, I have a cold. So let's talk loans. FSA makes direct and guaranteed farm ownership loans and operating loans to family-sized farmers and ranchers who cannot obtain, um, you know, your average, you know, go, go to your bank or your credit union or any other credit system institution. Uh, you know, you might have an issue. FSA is supposed to be a little bit more uh, lenient towards farmers who, who are needing financial, or financial resources. Um, FSA loans can be used to purchase land, livestock, um, e e equipment such as your tractors and your combines, feed, seed, and other things. FSA loans can also be used to construct buildings or make farming Im improvements. So if you need to uh, build some type of barn or if you need to build some type of infrastructure that, that, USC, uh, that NRCS probably don't pay for, you can use FSA loans to kind of get things, you know, you get that done. Maybe you need to build up some type of bridge to the, to the other pastures, something like that. You can use that loan for, you know, anything you need to do to enhance your uh, farm. Um, FSA loans are often provided to, to beginning farmers who could not qualify for conventional loans because they have insufficient financial resources. Uh, FSA also helps establish farmers who have suffered financial setbacks from uh, natural di disasters or whose uh, resources are limited. And of course, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have been kind of well versed with the, the uh, disaster relief funds and all that type of stuff that they had earlier in the year or, you know, when storms hit, different things like that. FSA sometimes has a, a, a pot of funding that you can go to to apply for. So guaranteed versus direct FSA farm loans. Let's see the difference between these. So a guaranteed loan, FSA guaranteed loan provides uh, conventional agricultural, uh, agricultural lenders with up to 95% guarantee of the principal loan amount. The uh, lender is responsible for servicing a, 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 um, a borrower's account for the life of the loan. Farmers interested in these loans must apply to a conventional lender, which then arranges for the FSA, the FSA guarantee. Lenders are ranked as either standard, certified, or preferred lenders. Preferred would indicate 
the most experience with guaranteed loans, but also means that the lender can service that loan according to their own lender's uh, <clears throat> uh, agreement instead of FSA's own services um, regulations. <clears throat> guaranteed loan uh, limit is $1,825. Okay, direct loans. FSA makes and service direct farm ownership and operating loans. They provide uh, direct loan customers credit counseling, loan supervision, so they have a better chance of success in their farming operation. Um, and you know that sometimes can be a be a pain sometimes when you feel like you know somebody's kind of supervising you as you kind of going going through this, but uh, it can really help too. If you really have a good agent that's gonna work with you through this process. And that's also an area that we can come in and to be advocate, we can advocate for you too, to help you get through this loan. Um, and this loan is available to farmers who are unable to obtain credit from, from commercial uh, lenders. FSA receives, um, a, 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 a limited funding for, uh, for, the, uh, for the actual uh, direct loans and applicants sometimes have to wait for the funds to kind of open up. To uh, qualify for, a, for the uh, direct loan, the applicant must be able to show su sufficient repayment of, uh, ability and pledge, and pledge enough call <coughs> excuse me, y'all, <clears throat> collateral to fully secure the uh, loan. <clears throat> Next slide. Types of FSA loans, operating ownership and micro loan. Farm operating loan, okay. So farm service agency, uh, direct farm, Operating loans are are a valuable resource to, to start with, um, to start and maintain and strengthen a farm or a uh, ranch. For new uh, for new farmers, FSA's um, direct farm operating loans provide a essential gateway into agricultural uh, production by by financing the cost of operating the uh, farm. And the uh, maximum loan amount you can get on this loan is 400000 And um, here we also have the terms of, of repayment, uh, too. And it says that the uh, uh, direct farm operating loan repayment terms vary depending on the purpose of the loan. The loan applicants, uh, the loan applicants ability to pay and when income is projected to be uh, uh, available. General operating and family living expenses are normally due within 12 months or when the agricultural commodity sale. For larger purchase purchases such as equipment, minor repairs, livestock, the term will not exceed seven years. Okay, operating loan purposes. Operating loans must be essential to the success of the farm operation and only for the following purposes: costs associated with reorganizing a reorganizing a farm to improve uh, profit profitability. For example, purchase of equipment to convert from con conventional to uh, no-till, uh, change from stock to cow-calf production, shifting from row crop to uh, vegetable production. Uh, purchasing grain, drying storage, e storage equipment <clears throat> to facilitate better uh, marketing, uh, purchasing shares and value added processing and um, marketing uh, co ops. And of course, purchase of livestock, including poultry. All right. Oh, and we we'll still continue with that. Farm operating expenses include are not limited to seed, fertilizer, pesticides, farm supplies, cash rent, family living expenses, initial processing of agricultural commodities under certain circumstances, minor improvements or repairs to buildings, refinance certain farm 
formulated debts, excluding real estate, land and water de development, use or conservation, and loan closing and borrower training costs. Farm ownership loans offer up to 100% financing and are a valuable resource to help farmers and ranchers purchase or enlarge family farms, uh, improve and expand current operations, increase agricultural productivity, and assist with land tenure to save farmland for future generations. And the max amount you can get on the farm ownership loan is $600,000. In the repayment terms, the maximum repayment period for the direct farm ownership loan and the joint finance loan is 40 years. Direct farm ownership joint financing loan, also known as a participation loan, joint financing allows FSA to provide more farmers and ranchers with access to capital. FSA lends up to 50% of the cost or value of the property being purchased. A commercial lender, a state program, or the seller of the farm or ranch being purchased provides the balance of loan funds with or without an FSA guarantee. Direct farm ownership down payment loan available only to eligible beginning farmers and ranchers and or minority women applicants. A down payment loan is a special type of direct farm ownership loan program that partially finances the purchase of a family sized farm or ranch. Beginning farmers do not have to identify themselves as a minority or woman and minority and women loan applicants do not have to be beginning farmers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the down payment Farm ownership loan is the only loan program that does not provide 100% financing. Down payment loans require loans, loan applicants to provide 5% of the purchase price of the farm. The repayment term for FSA portion of the down payment loan is 20 years. The non-FSA financial portion is required to be at least a 30 year period with no, uh, with no book, but a loan payment allow within the first 20 years of the loan. <clears throat> micro loans. So micro loans is probably one of the most common loans or uh, yeah, loans that are seek, seek after here. Uh, these loans are smaller. Uh, they have a max of 50,000. And the focus of the uh, micro loans is on the, is on the financing needs of small a small and, and beginning farmers, niche and non-traditional farmers operations, such as truck farms, uh, farms participating in uh, direct marketing and sales, such as farmers markets, CSAs, restaurants, grocery stores, hydroponics, uh, any kind of specialty or kind of, just like we said earlier, niche farming. And um, I think I, yeah, I already said that the maximum you can get is 50,000 and, and it can be combined with the other loan for 100,000. Direct farm ownership micro loans. Um, you can make a down payment on a farm. You could build or repair or improve buildings, service buildings or the farm uh, dwelling, soil, soil and water conservation projects and maybe used as a down payment uh, farm owner for the farm ownership loan and maybe used in joint financing as well. Direct farm operating um, micro loans. <clears throat> so um, this is, these are some of the other things that, that you can use that loan for. You have the essential tools, uh, fencing, trellising, hoop houses, uh, if you're into beekeeping, all the things that you need for bees, all of your um, all of your cow calf operation needs, livestock needs, and also this is something that's good. This is something that's going up too, is gap uh, for those gap prices for those for those audit fees, um, good agricultural practices and good handling practices um, that can really help out with that. Marketing and um, distribution costs. 
um, that's 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 really for your farmers who are going to the farmers markets, or who who may be selling to schools or something of that nature, and you can also pay for qualifying for OSHA compliance standards, and so you know you can use this you know if you have to uh, pass those GAP GHP audits you might can use this loan to build those bathrooms those hand those hand stations hand cleaning stations that you need on your farm. And the the um, the repayment terms for the direct ownership micro loan um, has a term of 25 years. For the direct operating micro loan, um, the repayment period will vary uh, depending depending on the purpose of the loan. General operating and family living expenses are due within 12 months or when the agricultural co-op Called the agricultural commodity sale, excuse me, for larger purchases such as equipment or livestock. The term would not exceed seven years. <clears throat> and the, <clears throat> and the, the general eligibility and requirements include not having federal or state convictions for planting, cultivating, growing and producing and harvesting. Um, the legal ability to accept self responsibility for the loan obligation um, and acceptable credit history, be a United States citizen, non-citizen, or legal resident alien of the US, non-previous debt for uh, given is being unable to obtain sufficient credit elsewhere, no delinquency or federal debt other than IRS tax debt, and not being um, ineligible due to this disqualification result from a federal crop insurance violation and has sufficient managerial ability to assure a reasonable exception of loan payment. Okay, so FSA came up with this neat little tool here in the last couple of months and um, I'm gonna share it with you. This is something that you can do anytime. Um, hold on one second, guys, my screen just popped off. Um, you can do this anytime, but I'm, I'm gonna go through it um, so you guys can just see. And this is just a basic eligibility tool that they have here, okay. Can you guys see this? Yep, yes. Okay, all right. So this is step one of the um, uh, Farm Services FSA Farm Loan Tool. And this is to give you a basic self-assessment to see if you can qualify. And this is step one here, of course. Uh, start eligibility self-assessment. And you'll click on that and you'll go through a series of, of, these, uh, of these questions. And um, as you can see, you just, Kind of, kind of just uh, can scroll through, and uh, and you can you can use this tool. This actually might save you some time. Um, you know, you can you can go through that and um, just read through and, and and just see at your at your own uh, time, your own leisure. Take time and do that. Um, and it's just asking you all the basic things about it. Uh, kind of well, asking you more kind of kind of about yourself really. And I'm kind of going through fast because I know we kind of press for time, but you can see all the questions that you already answered here. Okay, so yeah, that's on the um, that's on the Farm Service Agency uh, website, as you can see, and it's the Eligibility Self Assessment Tool. That's the real, that's the proper name for it, I guess. Okay, and uh, we'll continue with our slides. Okay, so what's next? Good record keeping. 
I think we all know if you've been farming any, you know how important it is to keep records. You need to be able to see what you've done, how much money you spent, how much money that you've gained. Um, and it's always good to have that on, on file because that's going to help you to apply for these loans. FSA wants to see that you are organized and that you know what's going on. And so good record keeping. Um, and this can consist of um, your uh, farm uh, and home finances and taxes. And you just need to have these things on hand when you, when you go there. Um, working with your FSA office, calling your uh, local office to schedule an appointment with a loan officer to discuss loan options, eligibility, re <clears throat> eligibility, re eligibility requirements, and required application forms. Um, so there are a series of, of, of forms that you guys are going to have to um, kind of fill out, of course. There's your uh, business plans, which I think it's a 2038. But those FSA forms, if you have any issues with them, you can contact me, but you can also just type those forms in. If you go, you can go on the internet, not on FSA website, but you can just get on a, on a browser. You can type those forms in and um, there's a sheet that, where there's the actual form there and it'll break down for every line. And so when you're going through those applications, they're gonna be asking you about units and pounds and all these things are gonna be asking you about uh, a whole lot. And if you have any questions or if you don't know how to fill it out, there's a, uh, for every line that you have to fill out, there's a there's an actual description on what goes here. And I've been using that to assist me when it comes down to assistant farmers. And so uh, if you guys can't get me, which you will be able to get me, but you can also tap into that tool too. We wanna make sure that you have every resource that you need um, in order for you to get this thing done. But yes, uh, make sure you call your uh, local office and try to establish a relationship with your uh, local office, with your FSA office and your NRCS office. And um, uh, also, you know, when it comes down to your loan app, you're going to have to know what kind of expenses you have all the way down to your food, your clothing, your mortgage or your rent, insurance, taxes, uh, medical costs. You have to list every creditor that you that you may have. So, um, so you know, understand that that you can't skip over anybody. You have you need to list every creditor because when they do go to pull that credit, they're um, they're gonna know. Uh, and also, when we talk about credit, FSA doesn't have a straight up credit score that they go by. They're gonna look more at your credit history. So there's no set score or no uh, no no uh, minimum or uh, maximum score that they're looking at. They're just looking at credit history. Um, also, remember to bring all of your financial records, which we have already said. And um, one of the most important things, be able to show how that cash is going to flow. And that's going to be on your on your form. You have a cash flow uh, sheet and um, you have to show how that farm is going to make money. And uh, bring any copies of your uh, lease to the office, to your lease and your deeds. Uh, and if you're uh, if you're renting land, and of course you have to bring your uh, rental uh, papers too to show that you have, you know, that you do have control over this piece of property that you're trying to get this loan for, or the, or, or the, that you're going to buy. Yeah. Okay. So once a farmer complete and submits an application, the FSA office will confirm whether the loan package is complete. They will then send a decision letter within 60 days. So in 60 days, you should know something. Now, what I don't have in there is in about 10 days after you put your application in, if you are missing any form on your application uh, or if you skip the line or anything like that, they are supposed to uh, contact you. So make sure that you cover your own self, make sure you turn in everything, but also maybe after the fifth or sixth day, call and just say, hey, you know, I'm checking on my paperwork to make sure that I filled out everything right, making sure that you got all, all that you do have the whole uh, application, because sometimes things can happen, things get lost. Um, you know, you might have something stapled and it comes loose. So you want to make sure, so they have 10 days that they have to uh, contact you to tell you that, you know, your application needs this, need that. And um, 
yeah, so we're pretty much to the end. There's my contact information, um, Otis at RafiUSA.org, and my phone number. You can call or you can text, and I always answer. And um, if you think that you have received any unfair to, um, to, um, uh, loan, the, the denial, or experience any kind of you know form of, of discrimination, you can call our hotline. Um, and not only can you call our hotline for those reasons, for any kind of technical assistance that you need, you can call their hotline, the 866-586-6746. And uh, we can help you through the phone until we can get to you. Okay, and we wanted to leave ample time for um, questions and answers because you know with this there's just um, so much information to cover. It's, there's direct guaranteed loans, and then there's the type of loans within that, the ownership, operating, and micro, um, and then you know particular things about eligibility in the process. Um, so. We will, you know, leave time now for any questions that are coming up. So if you want to add them to the chat box um, or come off mute, we'll kind of make our way through them. Um, and I do see one question already. Um, do all loan types, the operating ownership and micro loan, use the same application? Uh, you know, could they could someone print out the one form on paper, or would they need to print out multiple forms? I'm sorry. Could you could you could you ask that question again? I was I was trying to read the other questions. Oh, I see. Um, so for the different loan types, operating ownership or micro loan, do they all use the same FSA loan application, or is there a specific application for each type of loan? Oh, right. Okay. So the the uh, micro loan, I think, is the only one that's different. I think the majority of the rest are pretty much the same. I think that's that's right. I think there's a um, one of the forms is like direct loan assistance, right. um, and within that you would say you know, ownership or um, operating. Right. Um, and there is a, a resource that we can send out afterwards that has like a checklist of all the different forms that um, is required in application, and that will include that um, direct loan assistance form. Um, and then Ruth has asked, is there a list of questions often? asked and the answers that is that kind of like general um like questions you would ask an fsa office um just 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 uh general questions um well i guess that kind of just depends on you know what type of operation uh you're you're uh, trying to do and you cater that Katie, your questions to the operation. If I'm if I'm if I'm answering if I'm hearing and I'm answering you right, um, yeah, you just you know you ask your questions according to the operation, um, and even if you're not clear on which loan that you need to do once you describe your operation to them, uh, they you know you sh they should be able to help you with that. If I'm I hope I'm answering your question right. And go ahead and, and add back to the chat if. if um, you want to clarify that question or if we didn't answer it. Um, all right, we have another question. Is there a required minimum credit score? If so, what is it? Um, so um, they don't, now this is from FSA now. They say that they don't necessarily look at credit scores. They look at credit, um, credit history and payment history. So, uh, but, you know, I would say that I'm sure they do in their own way. I'm pretty sure that they do, they do uh, look at scores, but they have no, and you can go to the website and see this, they have no, 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 uh, they have no set score that they uh, go by. It's just strictly uh, credit history. But I'm sure, you know, behind the scenes, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. It's just between us. Uh, and then Lori has a question. Can you expand on the requirement to have been declined by other financial institutions before seeking an FSA direct loan in this case? Um, and do folks, uh, do folks submit the denial letters to the agent? And is there a list of institutions that FSA wants to see as valid efforts? So kind of multiple okay. questions there. 
Okay, great, great, great question. And I, I meant to plug that in. Um, so here's the thing about those uh, turn down letters. Those turn down letters, and this this actually will go back to the credit, to the credit issue too. They only ask for turn down letters if you have a certain credit score and depending on your uh, credit history. But like I said, they have no score, so I can't tell you that that okay, if you got a 600 or anything under that, that you'll have to get letters. But if, if you do have a not so good credit, nine times out of ten, you're probably gonna have to have those turn down letters. Yes. And then in that same question you asked. Um, um do folks submit the denial letters to the agent? Is right. there a list of institutions that FSA wants to see as a valid effort? Right. So any any kind of um, and as a matter of fact, that actually might be in the slide. It, it might have just been worded different. Um, yes, any 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 major financial institution will do. So if you want to use your credit union and your you know uh, local town bank, uh, just, it's just as long as it's a, a, a it's a legal or what's the word I'm looking for a credit accredited credit institution. I mean financial institution. Those letters can come from there. Yeah. Also, I'll stop sharing so we don't have to look at the, the slide the whole time. Um, okay. Let's see. All right, we have a question on how do I identify, identify preferred, standard, and certified lenders in my state? How do I identify preferred? Oh, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. That's a good question that I do not know, but if you give me your contact information, I'll get back to you with that answer tomorrow. It's one question I do not know at this moment, but I can get that answer for you. So please please feel free to email me. I think we also um, will send out a link to a fact sheet that describes more about that preferred certified and standard um, right, those right. and what it means. Um, I don't I don't think it links to like a directory of the different lenders, but it will at least explain kind of the, the qualifications for each of those um, titles. All right, then we have a question. What happens if a person is currently under bankruptcy law? I think that's in regard to eligibility. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be an um, eligibility issue. Um, I know most things when you're dealing with bankruptcy, I think it's well, like a five-year period before you can apply for anything else. So I'm going to say I'm pretty sure that they're going to uh, probably uh, look at that hard. I wouldn't tell you not to apply because because you might get favor. But uh, I'm pretty sure that that's, that might be some type of that, that I don't know, that might increase your interest rate or something like that. I'm really not sure. But um, I, I still I still would encourage you to just try and see. Great. Um, are feasibility studies needed? If so, do you have a resource to instructions? Feasibility studies. <clears throat> as far as I know, no. Um, I haven't seen any other uh, applications asking for feasibility studies. Now, if, if you do want to present a custom farm business plan just to have as a backup besides the, besides the standard little uh, form that they give you, if you have your own personal business plan and you have that feasibility study in that, I think they can't do anything but help you. So I would say, yeah, with your own business plan. But as far as FSA saying you have to have a feasibility, no. And I'll add, you know, some of the forms uh, for the application, like the uh, projected annual income and expenses and your business plan. It's, I mean, you're you're showing the feasibility of right. this loan right. that you have the ability to repay it. So it might not be the fancy sort of feasibility right. study that you would submit to a bank, but it's it's pretty much it's the same thing. Yeah, because they they want to know that you can repay. Right. Uh, all right. So Anita asks or says you mentioned that financial institutions are rated, and I believe you indicated one rating was being um, premium or a preferred lender, and that type of lender can set up their own loan guidance rules over the FSA loan rules. Uh, can you expand on how this might not be the to the advantage of the farmer? Right. Um, I, I I actually think how you actually just asked the question kind of answered it. Um, 
you know, you might have a lender that decides, well, I'm going to jack up the interest rate higher or, you know, something of that nature versus what, what FSA might do. But then again, if you have like a, like here we have down here in the, in the state of Mississippi, we have more community-based credit unions. So they might give you a better offer than what FSA is doing. So it, it, it just kind of all depends on that, um, on that uh, lender. And I hope I answered you right. And I'll um, expand on that. So what, um... Rafi also has this farmer crisis hotline and will receive calls from folks that um, maybe have been denied for a loan um, that they think was unfair. If they deny to FSA, there is a very clear um, process for appealing um, that that decision and, and seeing if that was like a, a correct decision or not. Um, and so that's something that as advocates, we can tap into and say, okay, this farmer has this many days to um, you know, request a mediation or request an appeal. Um, and we can clearly go through that process to try to reach a favorable outcome. If it's with a, a, a preferred lender or someone outside of USDA that can make up their own rules, they might not need to go through that sort of um, appeal process. They can just say, no, you're denied. So as a farmer, you, you have a more clear um, path for, to advocate for yourself um, under the USD rules, because there's there's more um, kind of complexity when we're talking about um, the federal right. government. Right. Um, I, I also see a, a good question, and this is one that's kind of dear, kind of to my heart from Ms. Ruth. She says, what loan is best to apply for a farm school on wheels as a nonprofit certification program. That's that's actually one of my dreams, Ms. Ruth. Uh, I've been wanting to take an old school bus and do a and do a moving farm on it, make it into have raised beds on the inside and everything. I would say um, I would say go after the, the uh, micro loan, but I would also encourage you to uh, look at some other grants because there's a lot of different programs that actually might purchase that for you. Um, I just don't know. I can't tell you the straight up names, but I would say definitely look at that and also uh, look at some state grants that also do that because you have a lot of um, agricultural um, grants that are within each state, depending on what you're doing, they might fund something like that because that's definitely different. So, uh, and if I can help you any way on that, you just, 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 you know, just, just contact me. But that's a that's a great idea, and that's that's one of the things that I've thought about myself. So I'll be definitely happy to help you with that. But I would say, yeah, I would try to micro up. Great. And I see a question from Jessica: What training is preferred? And um, I don't know if you want to add something else to the chat or come off mute to um, to define that. I'm thinking maybe um, kind of farmer training around that managerial yeah. ability requirement. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so when it comes down uh, to that, um, so we were actually going to do that in the, in the part two of this presentation, but uh, since you asked, so yeah, um, so and as a matter of fact, that was one of the questions that I asked Lisa earlier today, could we um, use this as a training, uh, but because this is not, well, it's a training, but it's not a certified training from Farm Service Agency, so we couldn't so you won't be able to use this as, as training. But yeah, different workshops that you go to that are FSA sponsored, um, you can use that as training and education to add to that, um, to, to try to fill that, um, to fill that, um, to, to fill those courses that they have for you. The requirement to fill that training re requirement. You can go to different workshops that are, that are certified and also your farming experience is going to be asked too. So you can always add that too. And I'd say if you're drawing from your, you know, farming experience, if you were like a, um, a manager, you weren't like the primary owner, or maybe you were an apprentice, the kind of important thing to, um, to highlight is that you had managerial responsibilities or you were making decisions. You weren't just, um, you know, performing basic tasks that were assigned by someone else, but um, you know, <coughs> deciding what to plant, when to plant, harvest, um, right. creating the production plan, that putting that within a lo uh, loan application will indicate that yes, you had a level of managerial ability. So I would, I would add that. Um, and then there, there was another question from Ruth that I, um, skip before, but, um, oh, it was to clarify that, that previous question. Um, 
so being a tree farmer and income is comes within 12 to 15 year periods, um, you know, expenses are being incurred throughout that time. Um, what would be the best loan to apply for since income is, you know, such far out in the future? Um, <clears throat> but a tree farmer, um, I guess I would say probably uh, one of the, the uh, direct loans, uh, one of those loans that'll go for the 30 year period. Um, I would, I'll probably, I would probably take, take one of the, the direct loans out. Um, I can dig a little deeper and try to make sure that, that that would be the best one for you. But definitely one of the, one of the longer terms being the trees is, is a longer in uh, investment. Um, yeah, I would, I would say that. And, and, and also, you know, FSA has the, um, the actual tree farming, the actual, it is, well, I don't, I don't know what kind of trees you're, you're doing, but if you're doing like the, um, the loblolly pine, FSA is over that conservation plan. Um, so um, that might be something that you want to look into too. Great. And then uh, clarification on the managerial experience, does that have to be specific to farming only? No, no, um, no. Um, matter of fact, I was reading, it could be, I mean, it could just be anything that you have managed that you've had to have, to have been accounted for, uh, supervised over, planned, you know, and everything that pretty much can, you can add that. So if you were a, I would say even if you were a, a manager at, at a retail store, I mean, you could throw that in there because managing is kind of managing. I understand what I'm saying? Um, of course, it's, it's different. It's different aspects of it, but it all kind of boils down to the same, you know. And I would say, uh, you know, again, if you're going to go and have an appointment with a loan officer, these are good things to discuss, um, you know, yeah. what would be considered managerial ability um, in reviewing your application and how and ask you, how would they like to see that written on the application to, to prove that. Okay, let's see. Could I get a loan for a lease payment if I'm leasing a farm? Could that be an operating loan? Um, I want to say that might have been in that. I have to go back and check this live, but yes, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I, yes. I think, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's in the slides. That's in one of the slides. Let's see. <clears throat> I believe you're right. I mean, it, that's that's a part of your annual operating costs. Um, right. That would be, um, yeah, an expense that you could include. Right. Um, let's see. Then we got a follow-up question. Oh, specifically on the. Um, Loblolly, where do you look for that information? Is there a tree farm office? Oh, <clears throat> so you can go to your uh, to your local NR your local NRCS uh, office, and you can do that there. Just tell them that you're, in, you're into the trees, and uh, they will put you in the. Um, uh, man, it's, it, uh, I, I I forgot the name of the conservation plan, but it, it's a conservation plan dealing with the uh, lob. <laughs> Lob, uh, Lolly Pine and FSA, well, uh, it's through NRCS, but they will be the actual managers of it. That part goes through them as far as the money goes. So uh, yeah, just go to your local NRCS office. And I got so many acronyms inside my head and I can't call that one out right now, but just go to your NRCS office and tell them what you're trying to do. And you can take a look at that program. And uh, yeah, that's the best thing to do for people who are doing pine. Great. And then we got a oh, good question from Carolina. Um, could you share a successful example or story with FSA, um, kind of the strong points of an application, um, you know, without names or identifying features, I'd say. Oh, so I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest, guys. You know, I've only been here since June. So I have about three farmers who are, who I'm in the process of working with trying to get along right now. So I haven't had a loan yet. We're getting ready to finish up an application now. So I don't want to try to lie and try to make up a story because it, it just wouldn't be right. So as of right now, no, I don't, but I will have one soon. I'll just be honest. Yep. What is the maximum IRS debt? 
that's allowed. Um, I didn't see a number on there, but I can go back and look. There's something else I can, I can, I can look up. I can research, and I can get back to you. And I will, I will. Even though we haven't gone through a full loan application yet, I will, you know, plug and say that, um, you know, working with Otis or you know one of our other um, farm advocates at Rafi, I think the a really good success is having sort of a an advocate or a, a buddy to go through the process and to be able to, um, you know, reflect what's been communicated in a meeting or say, you know, this form, can we go through this and talk about it? Um, and really just be sort of a, a partner as you kind of navigate that path because it can be, you know, confusing and, and complex. Um, so I think that's been a success of being able to um, help farmers avoid some, you um, mistakes that might have caused a denial um, and instead um, get them set up for a strong application. All right. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, what, let's see. Oh, I did see, okay, there's a question that um, just got messaged to me. Um, so someone lives in Colorado and purchased land in North Carolina and is asking, mm -hmm. can I get a farm number via an internet submission prior to a loan application or do I have to go to the county office in person? Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a real good question. And I'll be honest with you, uh, it all depends on how that, how that agent works. Some people want to see you, they want to, you know, see you in person, bring those deeds in. If you do have property in another state, in order for you to get a farm number, you know that you have to bring your deeds in. So um, I would say I would call. I would call because I mean that's a, that's a nice trip to make. So I would I would definitely call first and see can you fax these things over. And uh, I'm pretty sure you have to fax over your proof of ID and all that stuff too, so they can make sure. But once they pull up that, uh, once they pull your land up on the uh, map and it has your name on it, I think you should be in the clear. So I'm gonna say, yeah, uh, but I will still call and just make sure. Cause I mean, um, when I worked at the Hines County office here, we, you know, we had people all the way in Texas and California too. Some of them, you know, would make a special trip on a holiday and they'll come in and, you know, they'll do it. Then we did have a few that did it over the phone and we did it cause we, you know, I mean, everybody can't hop on a plane and just fly fly like that, you got other things going on. And so long as they can pull up your name, they can verify it, verify you, um, I think you will be fine. I don't think it'll be an issue. And all these offices had to figure out how to work during the pandemic. So they right. are set up to be able to do this remotely yeah. as well. Um, it could also just be giving folks an extra nudge to, to work with you. Um, but certainly getting the farm number would be the first step before um, you know, pursuing a loan application. Um, I think I'll switch over to kind of closing information reminders. If folks have additional questions, feel free to email Otis um, directly. Um, let's see here, I should screen again. Okay, so just as a reminder, um, everyone that attended this evening uh, within, I'd say, a few days will send you a link to this webinar recording if you want to go back and watch anything, as well as a PDF of the slides so you don't have to remember all the text that you saw. Um, we will also send you a link to a webinar evaluation. We always really appreciate getting feedback on what was helpful, what could be better. Um, within that evaluation, we also ask if there are particular topics um, with MSA lending or I guess broader that you would like to learn more about maybe in a, um, in more depth for a future webinar. Um, and as a reminder of ways that Rafi can help, um, OS is available for one-on-one -on -one FSA loan assistance, um, whether you're kind of at the beginning of this um, journey and trying to figure out which loan might be a good fit, or if you're really ready to get your documents together and submit a loan application. Um, so that's his email and phone number. As I mentioned, we also have other FSA program flyers, recordings of webinars, um, and other resources on our website um, that I encourage you to check out. And we will probably be doing a whole host of webinars about different USDA programs in 2023, both FSA and NRCS. Um, so take a look at um, or keep an eye out for those. Um, 
we'll probably continue to do those through our newsletter and social media. Um, so looking forward to that. We have, uh, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have one more question. Ms. Okay. Mercer says, um, what can someone do who doesn't have much of a credit history? That can actually be a good thing. And sometimes that can be a bad thing. Um, I would say just go in there and talk and ask. Uh, because I've, I've heard that before. Uh, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it can be bad. It can be good for the simple fact that you don't have anything that's hurting your credit. But it can be bad that you don't have enough credit. So uh, I, I don't, I can't give you a straight up answer, but I would say uh, don't give up hope that actually might be good. So just, just go try. <clears throat> awesome. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining this evening. Um, like I said, we'll probably be following up within a few days uh, and be in touch in the meantime if other questions come up.